The Ballad of the Patent Troll by Alexander Polterak Fear of the unknown, fueled by the human imagination, has spawned the legends and myths that make up the folklore of yesteryear and today. So too does the folklore of the modern corporation have its myths. Few images are more frightening to today's corporate executive than an injunction threatening, damages demanding patent holder. Instead of nursery rhymes, corporate dads read their children the ballad of the patent troll. On the road of innovation sits an ugly patent troll. From the largest corporations, he extorts a patent toll, armed with mighty patent claims, claiming willfulness and tort. Treble damages and pains, he drags infringers into court. Your resistance is futile. Patent troll is strong and vile. Wielding claim as an ax, he'll exact his patent tax. Corporations be united. He who slays the patent troll, by the queen he will be knighted and exalted by us all. It's time to debunk several patent troll myths. A patent is not needed to practice an invention. It's okay to sue for patent infringement. The value of a patent is not the same as the value of the patented technology. The patent system is not fair. A patent is not a tax on innovation. Patent troll is usually defined as someone who buys a patent for enforcement purposes but does not practice the patented invention. Some define patent troll as simply somebody who tries to make a lot of money off a patent that they are not practicing and have no intention of practicing and in most cases never practiced. To practice a patent means to use a patented invention to produce a product or service. Myth number one, a patent is needed to practice an invention. Most businesses produce goods for which they do not have a patent or the patent has expired. A patent does not give the patent owner the right to practice the patented invention. In fact, a patent confers no positive rights. All a patent does is give the patent owner the right to exclude others from using, making, selling, offering for sale, or importing the patented invention. Since a patent troll is someone who does not practice his patent, it implies that a patent owned by someone who practices the invention is somehow a superior patent, and that the patent not practiced by its owner is a paper patent and of less value. The notion of a second-class paper patent has no basis in patent law. The patent grant has nothing to do with the practice of invention. A patent is a bargain between an inventor and the public wherein the inventor discloses his invention to the public in exchange for limited exclusivity. A patent is a quid pro quo for invention disclosure, not for practice of the invention. Thomas Edison held over 1,000 patents, but did not practice most of them. Was Thomas Edison a patent troll? We do not require composers to sing their songs or architects to build houses they design. Penalizing inventors for not practicing their patented inventions is just as silly. The concept of the patent owner having to practice his patent is preposterous and it is simply a way to belittle independent inventors, the common folk who are then called patent trolls. With the disdain corporate America has for patent trolls, one would think that no major U.S. corporation would sue another for infringing a patent it does not practice. But in fact the opposite is true. Kodak sued Sun Microsystems for infringing Java patents that Kodak inherited from Wang Laboratories. Kodak was not the inventor of the Java patents, nor did Kodak practice them. Did that stop Kodak from collecting $95 million from Sun Microsystems? There are many such examples. Why are big corporations who sue for patent infringement on patents they did not invent not called patent trolls? Myth number two. It's not nice to sue for patent infringement. As an exclusionary right, a patent is nothing but a license to sue or an option to bring an action for infringement. A patent has no other function, so to be critical of inventors who sue infringers of their patents is ridiculous. That's what patents are for. If good fences make good neighbors, good patent enforcement makes good patent licensees. Myth number three. 
the value of a patent is the same as the value of the patented technology. The patent and the product covered by the patent live two separate lives. Many products are introduced to the marketplace well before the patents related to that product have been issued by the patent office, and many continue their commercial life well after the patents expire. The value of the technology is determined by its competitive advantage and market demand. The value of the patent, however, depends on completely different factors. How broadly are the claims crafted? Were they amended during prosecution of the patent? Are there estoppels in the file wrapper? How vigorously has the patent been enforced? How easily can its validity be challenged? How easy is it to design around the patent? The value of a patent depends on the willingness and ability of its owner to enforce it. The owner of an infringed patent who hesitates to enforce it eventually reduces the value of the patent to zero. It is incumbent on inventors and corporate managers alike to enforce their infringed patents. Myth number four, the patent system is fair. A patent is a bargain between the state and an inventor in which the inventor discloses his invention in exchange for a limited monopoly. With the median cost of patent infringement litigation exceeding $4 million, this promise is of little value to a small inventor. The U.S. patent system provides the patent owner with no means of enforcing his patent rights. In this bargain, inventors get the short end of the stick. Knowing the playing field is tilted in their favor, corporations infringe patents with impunity. The only chance inventors have to see justice is to find a law firm or a patent enforcement organization that will take their patent infringement claim on a contingency basis. So these organizations are also seen as patent trolls by the corporate landed gentry. The courts have already addressed the difference between the patent owner who practices his patented invention and one who does not. And the difference is not in the right to assert the patent, they share the same right. The difference is in the remedies available to them. The company that practices a patent, what's called a market participant, may be entitled to receive lost profits. The NPE, what the courts call a non-practicing entity, can only receive reasonable royalties which are typically a fraction of what lost profits would be. Myth number five, a patent is a tax on innovation. An inventor shares his patent monopoly in exchange for royalty payments. So a patent could be viewed as a tax. However, it is not a tax on innovation because it is not the innovator, that is the inventor, who is taxed. A patent is a tax on the exploitation of innovation created by others. Think of a patent as a highway toll. If the manufacturer of a product that utilizes a patent wants to use the patent highway, it is only fair to pay a toll to reward those who built that highway. So here's the truth about patents and patent trolls. A patent is not needed to practice an invention. It's okay to sue for patent infringement. Patents must be enforced. The value of a patent is unrelated to the value of the patented technology. The patent system is not fair to small and independent inventors. A patent is not a tax on innovation. Patent troll is a myth. For more information on patent infringement and patent enforcement, or if your patent has been infringed, visit us at www.generalpatent.com.